Hey everyone, thank you for watching this year. We've had a great year. Thank you for all the likes and the comments and support. And thank you for those that uh, mailed me some fan mail. Really, uh, really kind words and really appreciate that. We had someone in the comment section been asking me to say something. So uh, Merry Christmas and uh, Chicken Nugget. That's okay. Well, this isn't nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not nothing. <laughs> I mean, but they, the way they act like is that what they said it's yeah. just nothing and it's just normal age and wear well no this is not this is not nothing you feel as old as the average age of the parts of your spine that work mm -hmm. so if you only are utilizing the older parts of your spine you're going to feel like I, I, I can't do anything deep breath in here we go exhale all right mm -hmm. now have you had that done before yeah now is that move similar with other chiropractors when they try to do that it doesn't move it doesn't move and their response to that not moving is? Go to the next area. Go to the next area. Okay, interesting. <laughs> okay, so that's not good, right? And that somebody needs to be serious with you and go, we need, that needs to be worked on. Yeah. Hold this chin up. There we go. Wow. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and tilt to the right, Malik. Oh. Mm. That was a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, you had an x-ray taken from a previous chiropractor. Tell me about why you went to see him and just what you were dealing with. And I know you have a lot um, on here, but tell me about. Basically, it's, I just, so I went to a lot of doctors and trying to figure it out. <clears throat> yeah, different specialties and different things. Um, so I went to this chiropractor because they do like heavy adjustments, like the, all the other chiropractors I've been to, they do just like a real quick, like in and out kind of situation. Yeah. Um, and that one, I was having daily headaches, uh, or I still have daily headaches for the last 10 years. Um, daily pain for the last 12 years. Um, there's never a day I'm not in pain, so I'm just <laughs> trying anything I can. I don't really know where to go or how to get help. Your hands are numb, or there's numbness in your hands? Numbness in my hands. They go down my arm and into my hands. I sleep with wrist braces at night. Is it numb currently? Tunnel. Um, it is a little bit on the outside right here. Pinky and on the left hand, yeah, both hands? Both hands get it. How about the thumb index? Just mainly the pinkies on both hands? Mainly this side. And then okay. at nighttime, my whole hand and arm will go numb. Okay. And that's been going on, you said, for 10 years? That's been going on for 20 years. 20 years. And do you have any idea of what you, what would you guess just sort of just came when out I of your I was working at a metal factory um, okay. when I was 19, I think. We were so, doing a lot of metal. Like, we packed long pieces of metal for windows and doors. And it was a lot of, like, twitching your hands and flipping repetitive. vessels. and. Mm -hmm. Like lifting heavy things with your hands continuously for 12 hours. So. Okay. So, okay. You'll have to look. Okay. I'm just going to. Just the reports, but okay. Thoracic, lumbar. See, the difficulty with either of these is that they're usually taking laying down, which mm -hmm. is like there's no gravity on the spine. So, yeah, you know, sense. you don't really, um, it's not a stress view. And there's nothing real major on there. I mean, they said that they don't show the notes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you, it, you don't have the actual pictures, though. You just have the reports. I do, but they're in my storage unit. Okay. So when we come back next time, I can bring them. Or you just, like I said, it'd be great to, you know, sometimes the reports are an opinion of the image. You know, some people can get different, you know, mm -hmm. and I've had disagreements with radiologists. It's not like this is set in stone of, like, there's no evidence of disc injury and that's spinal. It's like, well, it could be... It could be, first of all, that they were laying down and that, you know, maybe if you put some weight on the balloon, it actually will start to bulge out. Yeah. It, we're looking for answers and, you know, I there's enough evidence, at least let me show you on the x-ray here. Yeah, there's more on there oh, too. Sorry. I have like six MRIs I had done. But all of them pretty much say the same kind of thing. There's nothing nothing to see here. Nothing major, no. Let me, just from what we have today. This is the neck one. Oops. It's okay. Well, this isn't nothing. <laughs> it's not nothing. <laughs> I mean, but they, the way they act, like is that what they said? It's yeah. just nothing. And it's just normal age and wear. Well, no, this is not. This is not nothing. This is. What's they're saying you have one, one, two, three, four bulging discs, mm -hmm. and that's with no weight on it. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm going to show you on the X-ray in a second is evidence of avoidance, and your body doesn't avoid something that's not hot. Okay. It's like if you put heat on something, your body's going to try to get away from it. So there's a significant amount of avoidance going on. 
So they, 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 they talk about canal stenosis. So there's two different types of stenosis that we're, that we're gonna talk about today. Okay. Um, the nerves that go down your arm come from your lower neck. Mm -hmm. The spinal cord runs down a canal all the way down to your lower back. That canal can become stenotic, like if you're looking overhead, yes. that makes sense? Mm -hmm. Or the holes on the side where the nerves come out can be stenotic. That's based on sort of the disc height. So that disc becomes compressed, the hole becomes more narrow. So they talked about two different, two different types of stenosis can happen. If you have bulging discs, then you have foraminal stenosis. And then they also talked about canal stenosis. Now, when you're looking at the actual spinal cord, the spinal cord starts off, we would say pretty big up here, and then it actually gets bigger where the nerves that come off, they form the brachial plexus, which are the nerves that go down to your hands. Mm -hmm. So there's a cervical enlargement, we call it, in the lower cervical that, so in the same area that they're saying you have a canal stenosis is also where the spinal cord is also larger in here. And then it gets smaller, and then there's also a lumbar enlargement. So we have, let me show you on the x-ray here. So, so with the with the cervical, the neck is supposed to be arched, mm -hmm. and there's a tiny bit here, but then it goes actually reversed into your lower neck, and that's in an effort to open up those foramen. So, mm, that part right there is that rubbing? Those are just joints. Okay. Those that's normal. Those are the, those are the little handshakes that the joints come together. But the main thing that's significant on this is that there's a reversal of the curve, of the natural curve in your neck, which is supposed to be like this. It's actually going in reverse the other way. That happens because of when you bend forward, the holes can get larger when you bend forward. There's a... So that goes around? Well, it, it allows you to avoid, right? So not only was your work requiring repetitive exercises, and when you lift things that puts torque and leverage on your lower neck, so they're tied mm -hmm. together, the health of your wrist comes from your neck. So it can be... Sometimes we get so focused on the hands, like that's where it hurts. But if I whack my funny bone, I feel my fingers, but it's not necessarily my fingers are a problem. It's because I'm hitting something here. Yeah. It's causing me, no, no, I feel it right there, doc. Yeah, but the pressure's happening here. Yeah. And we have enough, at least that I'm seeing at your age, that we have pressure on the nerves in your lower neck. The loss of the right alignment, why did that happen? Well, because your body's probably going into avoidance. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you're going to have those symptoms of numbness down your arms. Down the legs, legs too. Everywhere. Where in the foot? How far down the leg? So it goes all the way down to my feet, and then on the outside over here, this is all tingly. And After that's... I had my son four years ago, this has never went away. It's just tingles. Do they do epidurals? Yes. Uh -huh. And how many, how many children do you have? Two. Do they do epidurals with both? Yes. The 14 year old, whenever I had her. I had a twitch from where it was, where they uh -huh. did the spot. Uh -huh. Like when I'd get up, it would almost like, like it hurt really bad. The second one, I didn't have that pain, but once I came to, like all in here is just. I have a <laughs> handful of patients that have numbness yeah. post epidural from, you know, your your if they hit the nerve, those nerves don't regenerate. The mm -hmm. spinal cord nerves don't have a capacity for, for replacement, so that's tough. I do have gastroparesis too, and I feel like that's coming from my neck muscles as well from my research. How long has that been going on? Um, since two years ago is whenever I found out I had an endoscopy or, or how do you say that word to find out if I had celiac damage or not. And I, after 12 hours of not eating, I still had a full stomach of food. Okay. And so that was two years ago. Did they give you an explanation for that? What's causing that? I'll give you in a second. But I'll give you pills. Pills, right? Yeah. All right. So. But I'm pretty sure it's my vagus nerve that's being pinched. It's a nervous system problem. Here. Right. So. Smart girl. <laughs> not a lot of research. Well, yeah. I don't know how to help myself. Yeah. I'm at the point like I can't keep living like this. Aww. The nerves that come from your back that are involved with your neck and your mm -hmm. arms are the nerves that shut down your stomach. So this is the, the nerves, essentially inflammation in here mm -hmm. is the brake pedal of your stomach. Now your vagus nerve is the gas pedal. So you can either have stress shutting down the vagus the vagus doesn't really have impingement like the spinal cord and like the nerves coming from your spine yeah. the vagus nerve is mainly suppressed through worry stress not sleeping well kids life you know that shuts the vagus nerve down we stay what we call adrenergic or in a constant like fight or flight sympathetic yeah. state and that will shut down your stomach i had a mineral test done and they my calcium levels are through the roof my potassium is an equal dot right so it's showing that I'm stuck in fight or flight. Right, So you're, and part of that can be inflammation of your back, right? So the, the nerves that control your sympathetic come from your spinal column. So nerve pressure, inflammation of your spine, which is what we're gonna hope to clean out today a little bit. We're gonna go through, get everything moving, see how it's moving. We 
typically find in the spine, just to back up a little bit, that most people wear out prematurely the lower back and the lower neck. So it's, it's very silly to say wear and tear and aging because we see very little or no wear and tear in 80% of the spine. So you need to laugh at people when they say that to you. You go, those are aging, it's wear. Well, why is there no disc injury at C2? No. Why is there no disc injury at T5 or T8? You understand? Because so, you're overweight. That was the other thing she told me. Well, that's just nonsense because the, <laughs> these guys are carrying weight too. So mad. Well, that's, just, that's nonsense. It's nonsense because then why do I have thin 110 pound people with terrible disc injuries and problems? Right. It's nonsense. It I, I, what I found to correlate, whether you're a Miata or an F, what do you have, F250, F350, yeah. you know. <laughs> it doesn't fit in the driveway. <laughs> Either way, you have a small vehicle or a large vehicle, the alignment of the tire matters, right? Mm -hmm. doesn't matter what vehicle you have. You can have a small vehicle or a large, and the alignment of your spine matters. And at least one point I saw in your neck x-ray is that the alignment's wrong. So with the alignment being wrong, you're going to have certain vertebrae having an increased stress put on them. Mm -hmm. And when you over stress an area, it's gonna age faster. And so you're 30 something, and so your lower neck is gonna be 50, or mm -hmm. your lower back is 60. And that feels like I feel older. And you feel as old as the average age of the parts of your spine that work. Mm -hmm. So if you only are utilizing the older parts of your spine, you're gonna feel like I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And part of what I'm gonna to try to hope to do today is wake up and they're not gonna be very happy. <laughs> No. The reluctant stiff areas that have been tight that are the actual cause for why these areas are injured, we're going to try to go through and get them moving again and try to move and divert some stress to them. Now, they're going to be a little sore and you might see the marks and all that stuff is evidence of the congestion and the tightness and that's what's what we can do. We can't, the areas that are damaged, it's like a cavity in a tooth. We have to stop chewing on it and parts of our spine are older. They kind of did you a disservice by not having weight on the spine, but they're not mechanical people. I'm a very mechanical person. I want to see gravity on the spine. They're looking for more pathology, mm -hmm. tumors, aneurysms. You know, they're looking for something they can see that doesn't matter whether you're on upright or down. It would have seen it with, an, with a weight-bearing one, a stress view, mm -hmm. you know, but there's no, it's like a tire with a car, car with a flat tire and you lift the car in the air, right? The tire doesn't look flat anymore. Yeah. Well, that's because you didn't have any weight on it. Yeah. You put it on the ground, all of a sudden you put that weight on the ground, and all of a sudden the tire balloons out. Oh, it's flat. Yeah, it's flat. Mm -hmm. No, it was flat even when it was lifted. Yeah. You just guys didn't see it. Yeah. So they didn't put a stress view on you. So they did you a disservice by doing that because they're not biomechanical. You're coming to a postural guy here and mm -hmm. it's biomechanically, it needs to have gravity on it. The, the spine, the disc is made of about 70, 80% water, right? So it's like a balloon from the you know ringing in the ears to dizziness, lightheadedness, getting up. You know, those are your your brain body connection. So when you, for instance, when you're laying down and you go to get up, right, your heart needs to speed up, right? So there's a signal from your brain, there's receptors in your carotids that tell your brain, look, the pressure dropped. You need to send a signal to the heart to speed the heart up to fight gravity now. Now, if that relay signal has being inflamed, then it doesn't happen quick enough and then you get up and you're, you know, does that make sense? A lot of weirdness in my eyes too. It's like there's traffic on the roads and so the paramedics aren't getting to the mm -hmm. accidents fast enough. We've got to get the roads cleared up and then maybe then things will travel better. Head back for me. Here we go. We're checking this middle back. Exhale. Let it go. No, yeah, deep breath in. Here we go. Exhale. Let it go. Yeah, nothing. Deep breath in. Here we go. Exhale. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, have you had that done before? Yeah. Now, has that moved similar with other chiropractors when they try to do that? It doesn't move. It doesn't move. And their response to that not moving is? Go to the next area. Go to the next area. Okay, interesting. <laughs> okay, so that's not good, right? And that somebody needs to be serious with you and go, we need, that needs to be worked on. Yeah. You might need a couple hours of deep tissue and then we gotta do it again. And then we gotta, screw. it's like having a stain on a carpet and it's not coming out. We gotta get on your hands and knees and get to scrubbing, yeah, it's get some soap and water and we gotta loosen up that stain and then we're gonna run the vacuum cleaner again and then we're gonna keep pulling that out of there. You're way too young. I don't need it to click, and, and chiropractors really fall prey to the clicking. Mm -hmm. You know, we like the click. Whether it clicks or not is not vital. No. What it, it needs to feel like soft. Movement. Yeah, soft. And it feels really hard in there, and that that needs to be corrected, and we need to and then teach you tools to do things at home, not just me yeah. keeping your spine mobile, but things that you can do at home to keep it mobile. Gastroparesis makes sense because, my goodness, the entire area where the nerves, they... Oh go to what we call your celiac plexus or solar plexus is the lame term. Mm -hmm. 
the celiac plexus is the bundle of nerves that control your stomach, and that whole area is congested. So I don't. It doesn't surprise me at all. No, it's all right. Take a deep breath in. I got you. It's okay. No, exhale. No. You're fine. Deep breath in. Exhale. It's okay. It's okay. Uh-huh. Outside for me. Good. Mm-hmm. Outside. Okay. okay. Exhale. Let's go fix that for me. Good. Mm-hmm. Can't wake this up though for a second here. We'll get to talking. That's not good. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. All right. You did that one today. Mm-hmm. Let me hold this chin up. There mm. we go. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh. Sad. Well, if it, like I said, if this is this is most of your work of your neck is supposed to happen at the top here, mm-hmm. and if the lower, sorry, if the upper neck is not working, then the lower neck is going to be over. So this area being rigid is your problem. This is what needs to be corrected and what this needs is to where be. It started. I was right. hit in the face with a softball when I was thirteen. I was playing catcher, and it wow. came right off the end. Gotcha. So it hit me right in the jaw, and I'm like, I'm going to tell you something weird. I watched your videos, and made me think of it. Yeah, but yeah. Well, injury then... I have popping here. Uh-huh. Well, you're moving it... S- yeah, laterally, but even just so open... Laterally on this side, and then vertical on this side. Gosh. And I have a face mask on. Oh. Oh, I thought you had a mask on. You're no, no mask. No mask. Just straight softball to the face. Okay. Yeah. Right behind. That makes that. more sense. <laughs> That's one of the energy injuries. <laughs> well, like I said, when you have injuries like that, your body's going to heal stiff, mm-hmm. right? Because your body expects another hit to happen, and so it puts up walls, you know, fortifications, and now you have. The ligaments got torn, and that's why you have an instability now. You can move the jaw in a manner that's allowing it to repetitively click because the ligaments aren't holding everything as tightly in, in where they're supposed to be. I just thought it was weird how, because like I always, I never really made the association until one of your videos. I always thought it was weird how it would pop one way and it'd pop a different way. The more forward the head goes, it also puts a lot of stress on the on the temporomandibular joint, so that the TMJ is under more stress the more forward the more reversed your curve in your neck is and so getting the curve back to your neck will take a lot of the stress off your you know your jaw and then potentially reduce that clicking that would be my first way of let's get the curve back in your neck and then let's see what happens kind of idea that's that we need to get the spinal column healthy see people you know, your, your care is similar, correct, because all I do is I treat posture. I don't treat symptoms. I treat the alignment. Your alignment's not correct. There's inflammation in your spinal column, and that's going to cause your entire body. That's why you were like, can I just color the whole, th- <laughs> the whole pain chart in <laughs> for you? The whole thing. It's the whole body. Right, so that's, <clears throat> that's a nervous system inflammation. It's a nervous system that's under assault, and it's under a lot of duress, and we got to, you know, mm-hmm. turn the dimmer switch on and, you know, you know, it's overactive right now. Does it feel different from side to side? This side's definitely, yeah, a little, little tighter right here. This is mm-hmm. popped out right there. Oh, boy. A little crunch in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. boy. Let me go back to the neck here. Is where your neck belongs is the opposite of where where it wants to be. You want to we call this mirror image work. So we take you to the opposite <laughs> extreme and hold you there. And the more we hold you there, the more you'll be somewhere in between, okay. right? So if your body's if your head's two inches forward, I can't just ask for zero. Then you'll just go to one inch, right? So we have to ask for negative two mm-hmm. <laughs> to be at zero, we'll to come back right? Up. So and, uh, negative two is difficult, correct? But I got to take you to if you're a positive three, then I got to take you to negative three <laughs> to make you back at zero. So the farther forward you are, the more extreme the, the need to go the opposite way to, to balance it and to, to counter it. And to even, the fact right now is that I need to take you to negative three, but I only can actually get you to negative maybe one and a half because the joints won't allow me to. The joints are frozen. So we have to, that's where the adjustments and the chiropractic come in to oh. free up the spine so we can get deep enough into extension to balance the spine, to bring the posture back in alignment to make up for the years of work and getting hit in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Falling. The front part of your spine has a lot less feeling, so it just is always going to be easy to heal forward. Stretch it out. Yeah. yeah. There's round two here. Here we go. Well, I got you. I know. It's okay. Let me have. There you go. Oh, 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 good. 
There you go. A little deeper. Let's soften all. Soreness inflammation up here irritates what we call the trigeminal thalamic tract, but essentially headaches come from, cervicogenic headaches come from inflammation to soreness, tension, what is also called tension headaches, but it's just that postural tension and guarding combined that inflame this upper neck, keep it inflamed perpetually, and then it's just, I have chronic headaches just for the last 12 years. It's like, okay, well, that's a postural problem, <laughs> right? <laughs> If it was, so bad, if it was something it. else, it'd be more cyclical. You know, it'd be, it'd be just, it would be different, and then you wouldn't have the numbness in the hands, and you know, so no. concrete everywhere, like a rock. Told you I was a Chevy. It's okay, right? I was gonna say you drove that Ford here, and got me all confused. <laughs> Had to do that for the 150 pound dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> they have a different back seat style. Oh, okay, so I will say, no. There you go, there we go, chin up. There you go. That has not moved in a while. No. That was, those were like, <laughs> those were a little bit different. The first, Can you hear them over there, Steven? The first ones were the ones that she usually gets. Yeah, <laughs> that was 13 times a day. Yeah, that was the ones you needed. Mm -hmm. Actually, my thumbs aren't hurting anymore. Nice. Is there none? Well, mine aren't hurting anymore because your neck is complying. Uh, when your neck oh, is that's not... funny. You think if it doesn't hurt, they just turn. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, did it just be numb? No. <laughs> that's but what happens saying, in my life. Like, <laughs> your chair at the beginning, I was feel like I was sticking my thumb out there in the concrete. You know, just jamming my thumb into a hard piece of wood. And, you know, so moving back a little bit. Now your neck is starting to, you know, mold to my hand, which is mm. the whole purpose and goal of the joints. <laughs> Well, what you were noted, what you picked her on that x-ray was not, those are the joints and they look like little handshakes. They, they glide together and they're inflamed. They're open. That's why you can see them so easily on your x-ray. Because you see the position. back one too? I have like a... Yeah, that's... I, I horrible, but... I see a lot of rotation on that. So I'm going to... I don't like... The, I think the setup on that was bad. If you, have a, if you have a person with no scoliosis and you just rotate them a little bit from the center way of that x-ray, mm -hmm. you'll create a scoliosis. Okay. They didn't note it on your lumbar MRI. You told me to stand <clears throat> comfortably. So right. Correct. So you're rotating. Right. Exactly. Yeah. They don't, don't, don't oh, kill on me with that stuff. <laughs> like, like, like you shine a flashlight, you turn your head. Oh my gosh, the hand looks really weird. Well, yeah, because it's rotated. Like, you're, you're playing games now. Mm -hmm. The MRI didn't see it, which means it doesn't exist to me. The MRI is an actual more, this is what you actually are. Mm -hmm. this, you're not looking at artifacts and shining light. It's, it's looking at water. So there's a positive and negative charge to your water molecules in your body and so the magnet lines up and then it then it moves the magnet and those water molecules rotate and that that change in the polarity of the positive and negative charge just allows the computer to somehow draw an image of your body and that's about all i got yeah, that's <laughs> but, that's, but it has to do with water content and so it's an actual it's a better representation of what you are okay. than the x-rays like yeah, you're dealing with like it's like plato's allegory or you know the people are looking into the cave and they think the shadows are real the shadows aren't real. People over there are real, but the posture was like on me. I was like, oh my god, I'm looking at shadows. The mark won't come up everywhere. It only is going to come up where there's something internally blocked, right? So it's where there's inflammation, where there's congestion, is where you're going to see the mark come out darker. I mean, a lot right there. Just a lot of it. A lot to explain what's causing your headaches. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna get down. That's that's the stomach's gonna be down in that upper back, which are the roots of your neck. This all has to right here. Inflammation, tightness, just everything not flowing properly. This is what shuts down your stomach. I remember one time I was at the pool once and I had a big like meal and then went and threw the kids in the pool and this area got all inflamed and that night I almost was thrown up <laughs> because my stomach was shut down from this area being so bruised. It was like one of those last years before my kids were like too big to like throw them in the pool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> throw me dad, throw me dad. And I of course never probably used this, this area that much and you know created a lot of inflammation in there. And, we had the farm I used. That might have been what caused the stomach issues when we had the farm 
four or five years ago. Uh -huh. I was lifting all kinds of heavy stuff when we were renovating it. Just constant work. Mm -hmm. This is the most directly, this, this directly correlates with your lower back. So this, this tightness right here is not independent of your lower back. This is the cause, most direct cause of the lower back. And, you know, along with whatever happened during the epidurals. I'm going too much, let me know, okay? If we go, mm -hmm. we'll keep going deeper and deeper until you start squirming or yelling at me. All right, I can take it. Okay, all right. Does it feel lumpy to you when you're doing that? It's just everything's in guard mode. Yeah, mm -hmm. everything just feels locked in, shut down, locked down. Yeah. This is just trying to drill holes into the cement here. <laughs> <laughs> so I can, you know, frack it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, right there. Right. You know, I don't have any answers for you. I'm just giving <laughs> explanations. You know, the brassiere is part of this. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's part of what binds up and you know, we have ribs to protect our organs, mm -hmm. and then we put a bra on top of it, and then we went to why this area, then we lift with our arms all the time, which requires locking our chest, and so like everything all together is. Yeah, I have a lot of front shoulder pain too. Right, culminated in locking this area down. Mm -hmm. This is where we have to target. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you, you told me you had numbness in your legs. That's your problem. Yeah. So if you have numbness, that means that why would you expect that? Numbness is a nerve not sending a signal, right? Mm -hmm. Now you got you have a lot a lack of a pain is it's aggravated, right? Numbness is it's dying. Yeah. Okay, all right. Oh, no, you're okay. I was just saying it definitely woke up. Mm-hmm. When you're on this area, always go this direction if you can. We want to open the channel, but you also can massage and close the channel. And so, you know, I mean, then you're just whacking nerves. I mean, yeah, I'm doing that elbow thing like that down my back. And you get that saw. Oh, God. <laughs> Everything jumps. What does that mean if it jumps like that? She's hitting, she's hitting the nerve. It's just the, the, the channel, the brachial plexus, is it going through a funnel? And you have, you know, thoracic outlet. It's called thoracic outlet syndrome or. You know, pressure on the nerves. Uh huh. No. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. That hurt.
It's all buried. It's all got to be <laughs> drawn to the surface. Everything is like like a pool, like all the sediments falling down to the bottom and somebody's got to like shuffle their feet for a couple hours to get it off the bottom. You know, it's down close. there at the roots and where the joints and the nerves are, but in order to vascularize it and get it out of it, we have to like bring it to the surface. Yeah, the attachments quadratus lumborum on the top of the iliac crest here. This is what binds your lower back up. Mm -hmm. A lot of vice grip happening is, happens, and this is, is there right there. Yeah. I'm shocked at the first time I did that area. Mm. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the source. Oh, whole lift of their knees thing like they talk about, not your back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> New discs, it's tough, it's tough. I wish we, wish my father could regenerate his discs and you know, countless other people, you know, just it's, get one set of teeth, mm -hmm. well, two sets, but one set of adult teeth and one set of discs, and it's, you gotta somehow make them last long enough. Mm -hmm. And there's just, everybody goes off-roading their vehicles and they're teenage and 20 years, and they're like, well, I hope my car makes it. It's like, well, <laughs> I'm not sure if this surprises me, but if you, if you bought a brand new, I don't know, Lexus, and one, one, one Lexus you drove on nice smooth roads, the other one you took off-roading and took it off ramps, which one do you think is going to make it to 100,000 miles? I mean, not sure. I'm not sure, Ed. I think they both have an equal chance of making it. Well, I think you're delusional. <laughs> I don't think you have any idea what you're talking about. My suspension uh, got busted. I, uh, my power steering rack stopped working. No, no way. Huh. <laughs> Your power steering rack's not, uh, yeah, there's a real weird, weird clicking happening when I turn it. Oh, really? <laughs> Might have been that ramp you took it off of. And <laughs> <laughs> yep. I want to give it a break and let some blood come in here and then. That's your gastric paresis right there. It's just that's got to be dug out of there. Somebody's got to be mean. You've got to be looking at me going, Ed, is that all you got? <laughs> right? I'm serious. Make that a shirt, babe. The bar is nothing. <laughs> we need to make lots of shirts. That's on the list. Quite a bit of inflammation, just. Yeah, it's a lot. And then, oh, you know, wow. lower back, melt in those shoulders. Oh, that's real bad. Let's go face down for me. I'm sorry, I know. Come on. Ooh. Those have not moved in like 20 years. There's more, it's just like a...
right there. That's the one. My toe is still a little swollen on the... Okay. Okay. My toes haven't popped in years. <laughs> I've had a lot of ankle injuries in sports too. Uh -huh. um, Ooh, there's just one more. <laughs> what is this one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. That was one of those jams, though. <laughs> the big toe and that little toe. There we go. Oh, five. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, here we go. I got you. Go ahead and tilt left for me a little bit. Tilt left. Okay. Go ahead and tilt left for me a little bit. Oh, nice. Can you hear that? Uh-huh. <laughs> Super loud. Okay, don't take my ear off, please. No, that's fine. No, that doesn't hurt. All right, go ahead and tilt to the right. Go ahead and tilt to the right for me. Oh. That was a loud one. That felt good. Oh. All right, so this is how we're going to try to address some of the symptoms, at least in your lower back. This is the lumbar denral. Have you have you been on a roller at all before? Yeah. Okay. And how how long have you done that? How many years or how long? Six, have you... seven years. I don't think I do it right. Okay. Well, let's I'll we'll go over that in a minute. But this is since, I, since I've got you all loosened up, I wanted to show you the denral. This is a more specific tool than the the roller. The roller is a little bit more broad in its contact. Mm -hmm. This is more of a detailer. It hones in on smaller region. It helps to well. This is the only tool to really start molding that curve back in your back. Is it too intense? <laughs> too much? No, it's not too much. I can handle it. What happens is your neck is very loose in the lower neck. And if you put this in your lower neck and it makes the lower neck bend, it's going to hurt you. See, that's where I've been putting it. It's like more right. To no, the no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> that's where I've been putting it. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. You're, you're injured down there. I want it as high as you can. Okay. Just off the occiput, come down. It might need to, it'll slide down a little bit, and that's okay. But try to keep it as much as you can up there where it's, oh, it's not injured. Axis C3, C2 and 3 is where we're trying to target. Okay. You'll take, like I said, take your hand, press in your forehead, get your head to sink in, and then see if your head will stay there and put your hand back down, and then relax and see if you're. So yeah. force it to stay here? Well, no, no, to try, to, try to relax now, but try to push. It's like clay. You press it into the mold, and then it'll come out a little bit, but see if it'll. The more you do it, the more your neck will be compliant with staying curved. Leave back at you. You might need a book, though. I, I, I need you to have a block behind you for this because your neck is going to overbend and you're going to pinch your neck, okay. right? So because the back is relatively stiff relative to your lower neck, when you bend back on a roller, you're going to hurt yourself because your neck's going to hyperextend, right? And then your upper back is reluctant to moving. And so as your back bends more, you take this out, okay. right? Like I was doing, remember I was trying to show you, it, once your back... And you need to start you, 20 minutes. Did they mention that? 20 minutes, no? Yeah, 20 minutes. 20 minutes is a real number. You have to hold all of these when you're on a neck dead roll, a thoracic dead roll, even the roller. Now, the roller you can move around just total time. It needs to be 20 minute sessions. That's not to say if you only have five minutes that you can't just scan your back for five minutes. That's good too. If like, but it's, you're just loosening the spine. You're not really stretching it. That, that first adjustment, the first thing I started off with was thoracic. And I got nothing. Mm -hmm. it, and you're 30 something. And so it's like, that's not good. That's not. I thought I was like, did somebody say something that's bad? Because it's really bad. I'm not trying to overplay it, but that's really bad that your, your chest is that tight and that's a huge level of symptoms are gonna come from that. That has to be corrected. So you have to dig, roller, adjust it. <laughs> and it's, it's like a repetitive that's cycle. That's the hardest thing that I've been able to find is somebody that does all of that together. You know? I don't know, it's so tough, I'm sorry. I found somebody now. <laughs> oh, 